As well as the powerful new playback and navigation features, Baselight for Avid version 5 includes most of the new grades and other image operators we've added to the full Baselight systems. I'll quickly go through some of these now, but you should check out some of the other Baselight tutorials and reference documentation if you want to find out more detail. The first new grading operator is Base Grade. This is a brand new type of grade. It works in a colour space which has been modelled on human perception. What this means is that changes to tint and saturation have the same apparent effect regardless of the colour they are applied to. There are four controls which affect the overall image. These are Balance, which adjusts the exposure and colour balance of the image. Saturation. Contrast, which acts around the contrast pivot point. And flare. The flare control sets the black cutoff level of the image. There are also four zones, which can be used to make adjustment in different tonal ranges. By default, they split the overall range into dark and dim zones and light and bright zones. The controls for these zones are accessed via two different tab pages in the parameter view. Within each zone, you can adjust both the contrast and colour balance of the image and the saturation without it affecting the other tonal ranges. There are also pivot and falloff controls which set the level and the smoothness of the boundaries between the zones. The luminance graph shows the levels in the image relative to an 18% reference grey card. It's easy to make accurate exposure adjustments as this graph is calibrated in stops. Base grade is one of a new generation of grading operators which are colour space aware. In other words, it's been designed so that the controls have the same feel regardless of the working colour space. However, in order for this to be the case, it is important that the colour space of the input material is accurately defined in the input layer. For this reason, Base grade is normally used as the first operator in a stack, before any other types of grade are applied. This helps to ensure that its input accurately reflects the working colour space of the scene. Of course, there's nothing stopping you adding other grade types after the base grade, or even using multiple base grade layers to build up the overall look. One of the advantages of base grade is that it gives you a lot of control over individual tonal areas in an image, without having to use a secondary grade. Base grade also provides a basic colour matching function, which helps when match grading similar shots. You simply enable the colour picker and then choose the colour you want to match. You could do this on a neutral shade of grey or perhaps a skin tone. However, in this example, I'm going to try and match the brown colour of the soil. Now, I can simply drag across a similar area in the second image to offset the overall grade so the colours match. I can now make some fine adjustments to get the match as close as possible. This works especially well where there are similar shots but the lighting conditions may have changed during a day's shoot or perhaps between one day and the next. The other new grade types are not included as part of the default set of operators but they can be accessed when you right-click on an existing operator and select Change Operator Type. The new operators include Boost Colour. This adjusts the saturation of colours which lie in the middle of the colour gamut, but affects them less towards the edges of the colour gamut, providing a more realistic adjustment in highlights, saturated areas and skin tones. There's also Boost Contrast, which combines a mid-tone contrast boost with a spatial effect, similar to applying a sharpening filter but with a very large radius. 
the overall effect is to provide increased contrast between distinct features in the image. The Boost Shadows operator is similar to the Boost Contrast, except it works on the deeper shadow ranges in the image. The last Boost operator is Boost Range, which is designed to expand the range of a standard dynamic range image into an HDR range. This is useful in HDR projects where you are mixing SDR footage with HDR camera clips. You would need to be using an HDR monitor fed via an HDR display rendering transform in order to see the effect correctly. If your workflow requires the export of basic colour correction data in the CDL format, you can now use the new CDL grade instead of a video grade. This allows you to adjust the image using either slope offset power, exposure power contrast, or lift gamma gain controls. Whichever set of controls you prefer to use, the result will always produce a standard set of ASC CDL values. These values can be copy and pasted from individual shots into another application, but you would normally export them as metadata, either as part of the data within the Avid bin or embedded within an EDL or CDL. As I said, I won't cover all the new operators, but as you can see there are quite a few. The colour crosstalk and colour matrix operators provide a means to combine the separate RGB channels in different amounts. They can be used to either fix certain crosstalk issues from decoded raw material, for example, or for creative purposes such as channel inversion or colour merging. The Compress Gamut operator is useful when you need to desaturate extreme colours without affecting the overall saturation of the image. This can help in situations where light in the scene comes from a very narrow spectrum source such as coloured LED lights or neon tubes. Deflicker, as its name implies, is a temporal filter which removes flicker by comparing one frame to the next. Denoise is also a temporal operator. It examines the content in a series of frames to decide whether it's image detail or random noise. To apply the denoise filter, you simply have to drag across an area in the image to sample the noise, and it will automatically set up the parameters for you. If I now zoom in a little and set the display to wipe with the original, you can see that the noise has been reduced without removing detail. If you find that the image has become a little softer, you can add some detail back using the resharpen control. There are many more adjustments in the advanced sections if you need to fine tune the noise reduction. Note that temporal operators don't work in interlaced projects. So Baselight for Avid will display an error message in the Avid viewer to avoid you adding an effect which will not subsequently be rendered. Another update in version 5 is the Look operator, which can be used to apply a preset look or style to an image. This now supports Filmlight's new True Light based looks, which work in any colour space. These are based on physically modelled processes and many of them have been optimised to work with the TrueLight CAM DRT. This means that these looks can be used in both SDR and HDR projects and will have the same appearance. If you hover the mouse pointer over the look names, the pop-up text provides some information about the look. For details on how to create your own looks, please contact Filmlight Support. The last of the new operators I'm going to mention is the Texture Equalizer. This filter divides detail in the image into separate spatial frequency bands. The finest detail lies in the 1 to 1 band, whereas the 1 to 16 and 1 to 32 bands will only have an effect over the larger objects in the image. For example, if I decrease the gain of the 1 to 2 and 1 to 4 bands, it has the effect of softening the skin 
but without losing the fine detail. Increasing the gain of the lower frequency bands has a similar effect to the boost contrast operator. There are a few operators in version 5 which cannot be edited within the Avid plugin. For example, Paint, Perspective and Grid Warp. They won't appear in this list. However, if you import an AAF or BLG files which include these effects, Avid will still be able to render them. Baselight version 5 includes some fairly big changes to our colour management system. To ensure full compatibility, we've incorporated all the new colour space features into Baselight for Avid. If you take a look at the input layer, you will see that there are several more options than in the 4.4 version. Firstly, we've added a new set of colour spaces, which includes several wide gamut and high dynamic range colour spaces. These all follow a standard naming convention, which includes a reference to the gamma as well as the colour gamut of the colour space. This means that some of the colour spaces used in version 4.4 have now been renamed. For example, the Rec. 709 video colour space is now called Rec. 1886 2.4 gamma slash Rec. 709, as this more accurately describes the colour space as a whole. We've also developed some new colour spaces and display rendering transforms, which have been designed to support combined SDR and HDR workflows. The Filmlight T-Log slash E-Gamut colour space, for example, works very nicely with the TrueLight CAM display rendering transform. Notice the multiple curve icon in the TrueLight CAM DRT button. This indicates that this is a family of DRTs and not just a single transform. The button next to it, which says Automatic, will allow Baselight to choose the best DRT according to the chosen viewing conditions. For example, if we are viewing on a standard video monitor with a maximum brightness of 100 nits, then it will choose the Video 100 nits version of the DRT. However, if we are viewing on a P3 cinema display set to 48 nits, then it will choose the Cinema 48 nits DRT. If you have a specific display set up, then of course you can override the automatic mode and select a specific DRT from this list. If you want to know what colour spaces are being used at each step in the processing chain, you can check the colour space journey. This view can be opened from the Views menu or toggled using the keyboard shortcut listed in the Views menu. The final extra bit we've added to colour spaces in version 5 is the Mastering Colour Space option. I'm not going to go into the details here. I would suggest you watch the Improvements in 5.0 True Light Colour Spaces video on our website. However, to explain briefly, the Mastering Colour Space option provides two functions. Firstly, it can be used to limit the gamut of the final output to a specific colour space. For example, you may be grading in a large ACES or REC 2020 colour space, but want to restrict the final renders to P3. This can be done using the clip function of the mastering colour space. The second function is to map the rendered neutral axis to a specific display white point. You can see the change of the white point in the viewer. One final thing to note about the colour spaces is that we no longer support video legal colour spaces. Everything is designed to work full range. This means that if you have input clips which are legal video range, you will need to make sure that this legal to full scale button is enabled. Other small but important updates we've added are shortcuts on the F3 and F4 keys to jump between keyframes, these do the same as the left and right square brackets, but not all keyboards have those. We've also added the ability to save the Avid project from within the Baselight for Avid plugin. 
This is very useful as you can spend a lot of time inside the plugin without needing to return to the main Avid UI. And it's handy to be able to save occasionally as you're working without having to close Baselight. You simply press Ctrl S or Command S on a Mac to save. The UI pops down for a moment while Avid saves everything and then comes back again for you to continue working. With all the new functionality in version 5, we've added quite a few extra preference settings. I'm not going to go through them now, but I will show you a very handy feature. If you can't remember where a certain setting is, you can now search for it by clicking on this button. For example, if I want to change the default curve grade mode to RGB curves, then I can simply type in curve and it lists the relevant settings. Double clicking on the search result automatically goes to that setting. So now that you've seen all the amazing new features in version 5 Baselight for Avid, why not go and try them out for yourself? Thank you for watching.